Hi, I'm Carol Wilson, Editor-at-Large for Light Reading, and I'm here at our Future of Cable Business Services event with the event chairperson, Alan Bresnik. Hi, Carol. So, Alan, from your heavy reading research perspective, what's new about Cable Business Services? I think it's a growth story, correct? It's definitely a growth story. They're hitting a real milestone this year. This is the first year cable operators have made over $10 billion in the U.S., which is would have been unthinkable a couple of years ago. So. How are they doing this? Are they going into new markets? Are they bringing in uh, new customers? Or is it, uh, wh where, where is the growth coming from? The growth is coming in a couple ways. And mostly it's coming from them going deeper into the markets they were already serving, into the vertical markets they were already serving. So they're going deeper into, eth um, sorry, they're going deeper into the healthcare, they're going deeper into hospitality, they're going deeper into education, they're going deeper into government. And they're going up market as well, not just small businesses, but middle market businesses, and in some cases, even enterprises. So how are they able to gain this new market share against the traditional telecom players and also uh, competitive carriers? Um, by being in the right place at the right time, partly, and also having the technology at the right time. They are been able to be more agile and more flexible to go into things like Ethernet and IT and cloud and, and managed services quicker in some cases in the telcos because they don't have as much legacy equipment and technology that they have to deal with. Okay. So they don't they don't have to worry about essentially uh, cannibalizing existing services. They go in and everything's greenfield. Right. So it's, it's fresh. It's, which is the same reason why the telcos are doing so well in video right now because they don't have the same kind of legacy stuff okay. that the cable operators do. What about price? Are, are they competitive on price as well? They're definitely competitive on, on price. In fact, uh, originally they came in lower lower price because they can afford to do lower pricing. Okay. Uh, and they probably are still doing some of that. They also are being more flexible and they're also being more customized because they are going after, they're actually visiting some of the small businesses and trying to meet their needs, which telcos may not be doing as much of. Okay. So traditionally cable business is within a regional footprint, right? Are right. they doing anything to go national? Well, Comcast and Time Warner are trying to do something to go national by merging. That would be the biggest thing. Okay. But, because if that merger goes through, they will eventually finally have one basically national cable company serving almost every major market in the U.S. Okay, because without that, they really struggle to go national, don't they? Right. Uh, Comcast is very big right now, so you'd think they would be national, but they don't have New York and Los Angeles, which is what Time Warner Cable will give them, the two biggest markets in the country. Okay, so a year from now, we, we may be talking a very different growth story then. Right. We'll be, if the merger goes through, we'll be talking about a company that now makes $7 billion alone in business services. Wow. Okay, great. Alan, thanks for being here with me today. Sure. Thank you, Carol.